Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our second hot topic, and this one talks about UK university orders Nigerian students to leave over unpaid fees. Nigerian students at Teesside University in the United Kingdom have been told to quit the school and return to Nigeria over unpaid fees. The students were blocked from their studies and reported to the Home Office after the value of the Naira went down, wiping out their savings. Seaside University said the move was in line with the UK's immigration regulations. The university said it had no choice. Failure to pay was a breach of visa sponsorship rules, and it said it had made every effort to help the affected students, including with bespoke payment plans. Now, our guest is Dr. Peter Ogudaro, an educational researcher, leader of the Nigerian teachers community. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure to join you. All right. So we're talking about students being sent back home. Um, these are university students who are, have been studying in the UK. In fact, one um, report said there was a lady, she, she's, she was just about handing over a dissertation and then she's been sent back home. She cannot re-enroll. We're seeing all of this. I just want to, um, you know, just get your comment on this particular issue right now. Well, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a contract between the institution and the student. And uh, before you enrolled uh, and got accepted as a student, uh, you uh, you gave uh, your word that you would be able to pay your fee. And that's the condition uh, that uh, warranted you have been given an offer you know, to come and do a, a program in the university in the UK. And so uh, if you probably read your contract well, you would have also seen that um, uh, there would have been clauses that indicated that if you do not meet those conditions, the university would have uh, the latitude to uh, withdraw your membership of the university community and report you to the appropriate authorities in the UK. If you are very familiar with how UK uh, education and immigration system works, these universities have licenses to be able to recruit international students and they are under obligation to ensure that those students are, uh, are studying within their institutions and not uh, people who disappear into the community to go and work and earn money because the primary reason for which their visas uh, were issued uh, uh, happened to be the fact that they are coming to study and so they do not want you to um, stop studying because you haven't paid your fees and then you go into the community and you go and work and so i think that's what has happened i studied in the uk myself and i know how the system works i did also experience some of those challenges when i was doing my my phd and it wasn't very easy but i had to find a way to um, work with the university and work with my family to be able to meet my financial obligations and so um, I wouldn't place all the blame on the students. I wouldn't place all the blame on the institution. The institution is trying to ensure that they do not violate the, the basis for, of, of, upon which their license was to recruit international students was issued. And the student is working very hard to try to improve, improve her circumstance because education uh, remains a tool which you can use to uh, migrate out of poverty and improve your life uh, in those circumstances. I think that Nigeria takes the larger blame uh, in this matter because when we were um, thinking about uh, removing oil subsidy, um, tinkering with our uh, foreign exchange uh, uh, policies and things like that, it didn't occur to us that uh, we had young people abroad who we have failed uh, to take care of by way of adequate provisions for higher education in Nigeria who are now studying abroad because they have a right to uh, look for wherever they can find good education that will empower them to become globally competitive. So our government failed them. We can't blame the UK government. We can't blame TSAD University. We should blame Nigeria for failing uh, to make um, the right provisions for higher education in Nigeria, which would have made um, it unnecessary for people to travel abroad. And if we didn't make those provisions, then it would, have, it would be unnecessary and very uh, scandalous and disappointing for us to now implement a policy that didn't uh, recognize the fact that this will impact negatively on the uh, education uh, provisions that um, individuals are making for themselves abroad. I think that's, that's, that's the way to look at it. Um, 
on uh, without looking at it deeply you might just jump into conclusion and think that um, the teaside university is to blame that's not how the system works okay. i trained in that uh, country and i know how the system works well from the uh, placards that were being carried it seemed as if uh, there was something off uh, because they were saying one of the placards said respect the contract you entered with your students yeah. the other one said uh, teaside university stop lying, lying to, the, to UK. the uk so yeah. uh, I don't know. There's some, there seems to be something that is off. Some form of contradiction, yes. maybe. So, will, what kind of rights do these students have? How can Nigeria help? Do they have to fight this fight alone? Or they could have some external help or, or from, from the country or something? I, I don't know. Because if there's something off, will they be abandoned to themselves to fight this fight? Or there's something that can be done by... You know, diplomacy Maybe Nigeria or having yeah. a legal council so, so I don't know. Them. What if their side of the story is true, that uh, the, the Teesside University is lying? Well, um, le let me put it on record that Teesside University is not the only university in the UK uh, that is treating, uh, um, that has taken this line of action. Um, several universities in the UK are places where Nigerians are having similar experiences. And so it's not peculiar to Teesside University. Teesside University is uh, working hard to preserve their license to be able to recruit international students. Uh, UK is not like your country, where things happen without <laughs> people respecting <laughs> oh you. Oh uh, seriously? The seriously? Yeah, the so, <laughs> yeah I, I can tell you that. that I, it's our country, I'm product, <laughs> sir. I'm a product of a UK university. Oh, so I hope I brought it's when still you, our yeah. country. Where you hear the rule of law, that is the country where it happens. And so if you're in a university, you are there to provide education. If you have if you desire to recruit international students, you have to approach appropriate authorities to get a license to do so. And it's your responsibility to keep that authority informed of what is happening to your students. Now, uh, Don, uh, uh, I'm a Nigerian, so my, uh, uh, my attitude towards this matter is to uh, wear the shoes of the Nigerians who are involved. Some of them are actually my clients, young people I advise. Uh, so the appropriate way to deal with this matter is not take, is not to take a legal approach. If you go legalistic, you will lose completely. So I think that the Foreign Affairs Ministry, mm -hmm. Ministry of Education in Nigeria, Finance Ministry, the presidency itself should step in and see if they can um, negotiate with appropriate authorities in the in the UK uh, mm -hmm. to try to give our children you know um, soft, soft landing. Uh, if you are very familiar with the way we live our lives in Nigeria, uh, when you are filling a form, uh, most of the time, you know, um, you just go straight to uh, tick the button where they say, I agree to all the policies and where I, in the, in the event of our discovery, we have the fine line. print. Yeah. Uh, so the students will just tick without reading, without reading the, you know, the tiny, tiny letters. And uh, when the problems come, they now start, you know, carrying these placards and start doing propaganda. Every university in the UK has a well-staffed legal team. So university is unlikely to have gone to this extent without seeking counsel from their legal team. And so when the students are saying, respect your contract, yeah, well, I, I understand what they're trying to say. They are saying, Please let us finish our, our our academic program. But they are forgetting that they had entered into contract that said we have to pay our fees. And so UK um, um, officers uh, in uh, officers in UK institutions don't don't look at life the way we look at life here. They want you to respect your contract. They want you to play by the rules. Mm -hmm. Here we are in the habit of you know uh, you, you monitor what happens on our roads. A, 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 a bus driver. Uh, disrespects um, the, the, the the red light and the, and the traffic officer says you stop and then everybody on the bus comes down and starts begging the traffic officer say I better go we are rushing to somewhere we have somebody going to hospital you have violated the law they want you to pay the price for violating the law and in many cases it's technology that actually determines what happens when you violate the law many of the letters these students should have been receiving we are not actually being, act being activated by human beings who are sitting in front of computer and doing things there those things are set up so periodically computer um, has been programmed to remind you of the fee you're owing and the computer has also been told that if after uh, maybe like five warnings you haven't paid up then you should be you should be locked out of the university system that's what has happened so 
we should move the responsibility from the shoulders of the students. It's not their fault that they went abroad to seek, seek good education. Mm -hmm. It's not the fault of the families that the money they save for them to be able to pay their school fees has, has been made nonsense of by the kind of foreign exchange uh, you know, regime we are mm -hmm. running now. So it's the responsibility of the government that has put us in this kind of circumstance to go and negotiate on behalf of the students to ensure that they finish their education. Because if they finish their education, it is in the best interest of Nigeria. They are coming home with, with fantastic skills. The kind of education they are receiving is not the type you give in Nigeria. Uh, one month of you know good uh, quality education in a UK university may be the equivalent of even up, up to seven years of education in the typical Nigerian university. We are not doing well. This is my space. I hold a PhD in it, and Nigeria it hasn't fared well in education. And so that's what is driving our people abroad. And because there are young people who do not know that that society runs on the basis of law, they think you can just beg university officers. University officers, their hands are tied. They work on the basis of law. You can't get them to do anything otherwise. That's how the system works. So please, let's use all the channels at our disposal to impress it upon our, go our government or the relevant agencies of government. I have given you an example of some of the agencies that can step into this matter. There is a, a commission for diaspora affairs. There is a foreign affairs ministry. There is the presidency. There is minister of education. There is finance ministry. They should be able to, um, you know, work out something. That's a, what a country like United Arab Emirates would have done. That's a, what a, a country like Finland, Denmark would have done. We should be able to do it for, for, for our children because they have gone to learn because they want to be able to come home and make a, make a huge difference with their skills. And even if they don't come home, they will, wherever they are, they will look back and, you know, through different uh, approaches, be able to help Nigeria to, you know, to move forward in life, uh, to, to move forward as a country. Yeah. And many of the people who are running the first of our country now, go and check them. Many of them studied in the U.S., in Canada, in the U.K. Mm -hmm. They also had to pay fees, most of them, to be able to get to where they are. But unfortunately for us, we are at a situation where the money you save to be able to take care of yourself in terms of school fee has been messed up by... Uh, a, 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 a regime, you know, in terms of foreign exchange that was not well thought out. We didn't consult all the stakeholders. If they consulted students' union in the UK who are Nigerians, they would have advised them not to go in this direction because it will impact negatively on students who are, you know, studying abroad. And some of them are there with their children. And when, you know, we expose UK institutions to this kind of, um, uh, 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 you know, threats and uh, uh, and propaganda. We discourage them from accepting Nigerian students in the future, and that's not good for 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 our image as a country. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I I know that the FX crisis, the foreign exchange crisis, you know, played a major role in what we're seeing today because I'm sure a lot of people had saved up some money, saying this is what we're going to use for the fees. But now, when you even exchange that amount. It's not the same. It's not enough, right? And um, the educational system in the UK is one of their ways of generating revenue. So there is no sentiment in business. This is business for them. But now, sure. shouldn't this be like a renaissance, you know, for the Nigerian um, education system, for us to start to invest heavily in education? Because I know that in the past, um, you, you know, University of Ibadan was even one of the best universities in Africa. You see people coming from uh, different parts of Africa coming here to study. But now you're looking at our universities. Most people do not want to study there anymore. There is strike actions. The level of research is not enough. And so people are moving abroad to go study. Shouldn't this be where we draw that line and say we need to invest in our educational system for us to be able to train our kids and then we're not looking at the FX rate. Yeah, well, uh, you have good intentions, uh, my dear sister, but this way you're <laughs> thinking is not the way the people running your country are thinking. Oh my they, goodness. They, they are saying able your to country. access <laughs> easy money from our, from, from our public post and use it to pay, and use it to pay their own children's school fees in Canada, in the UK, and in America. They do not wear the shoes, and so they do not know where it pinches. They don't understand what, what you are talking about. And they haven't even started having the conversation on how to start the journey that will improve the quality of higher education we provide in our country. And why people like us, for example, choose not to work in the regular university in Nigeria, really, is because these people do not know the value of higher education. They do not realize that in the absence of good quality higher education, you won't be able to prov provide the type of thinking it takes to truly move a country forward. And many of my friends, 
and colleagues who tried to get into after studying abroad they come came home and got him get get got into a bad or calabar you know university of lagos most of us have gone back abroad because we didn't find the enabling environment to enable us to stay and work with the students those in the sciences their laboratories are not equipped mm -hmm. they use the, they use their salary which is not adequate to buy reagents to be able to train their children well, those doing PhD uh, 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 who have been supervised by some of my colleagues, what you find is that those students are poor and they don't have the money it takes to uh, fund their research from their own you know, pr private pockets. And what you find is that lecturers are using the, 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 the money, sometimes even their salaries are owed for months, you know, to be able to help uh, these students to, 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 go, to, to go through their PhD experience successfully. So the politicians don't understand what we're talking about. They do not realize that in the absence of good quality education, every other effort you are making is wasted effort. It's not going to work. They don't have the right people in the right places. You need to get the right people in the policy space in education to be able to first determine what is our philosophy of education. What is the education is what is education supposed to be doing for us? We don't know what that is. We keep thinking that politics will resolve all our problems. No, education is the root of is the root through which you get to your paradise when it comes to development. Look at all the countries in the world that have made it. The reason why you, United States of America remains the world's superpower number one is because their higher education system is very robust. They have the Harvards, they have the you know Yale, they have yeah. Stanford, they have. Uh, 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 Celtic, they have, they have, they, they, they have MIT, etc. If you count the top twenty universities in the world, the US will claim two, will claim minimum of ten, and that's where they're generating the ideas that in, have enabled them to create Facebook, to create Google, to create uh, IBM, to create uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, etc. All the technology that is, even this technology that is enabling us to interact this morning, is the US that is behind it. The people creating this is a product of good universities in the US. Now, we don't realize this. We are just consumers. We consume technology other people have created, and we don't want to create the type of system that have, uh, systems that have enabled them to create this kind of technology we are using. All we just do is we, we still go, uh, you know, our politicians go into public spaces, they steal government money, uh, 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 give themselves, you know, uh, all kinds of bonuses uh, for mm -hmm. doing little or nothing, and they just go and waste the money abroad with their girlfriends and uh, all kinds of people, and they come back here and they blow grammar for us. And we, we the even ordinary citizens are not holding our, our leaders accountable. We are not insisting enough, really. I can tell you that we are not insisting enough. We should actually speak out. And those of you in the media should continue to do this type of, you know, advocacy are doing by this conversation we're having this morning. We need to hold our, our public, you know, uh, 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 servants, you know, accountable and yeah. get them to do right, to, to do the needful. Look at what our children are going through abroad. This is very, this is needful. It was completely avoidable. If we had to do uh, rejig our financial system, our funding exchange system, we shouldn't have forgotten at the point of uh, 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 thinking about the policy, our children who are studying abroad and how this was going to impact on them. And they made provision to give them soft landing. We just made the policy back at home and we, we, we forgot that this is what was going to affect uh, 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 tens of, 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 of thousands of Nigerians in U.S., in Canada. And, 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 and in the UK. And then all we do now is to want to uh, place that blame. On, on, on UK institutions. I, I do not think that we are doing the right thing. So I, I sympathize with those young people, but our government should rise up and do the need. Hmm. Okay. All right. It's quite unfortunate. I mean, it's even embarrassing hearing that, you know, our students are being sent home. Mm -hmm. You know that thing like, oh, you won't write an exam, mm -hmm. get out of the class. That, that's just the same way it feels. It's the same thing like yeah. deportation. Uh, you yes. See, and you, it's deport it's someone. See, you, you already know it. Even in Nigeria, go to private schools. Private schools do the same thing. Why yeah. don't we go to, you know, on air and, and complain about private schools? Private schools in Nigeria, primary school level, secondary school level, even in universities. If you don't pay your fees, they kick you out. Mm, yeah. Because this, these places... Uh, you know, uh, uh, basically, especially in the case of Nigeria, they're basically business places. Not exactly so in the UK. UK institutions are actually not business institutions. They, they need money to pop, to be able to maintain their laboratories. Yeah. If you can't pay, then, then the, the, the reason why Nigerian students accept a general education because we are very hard working people. So when they submit their transcript, they find them uh, potential researchers, potential inventor, inventors, potential hard, you know, working uh, uh, paid employees. Who, when they finish, might be able to make very useful contributions to the UK economy. So they mm -hmm. accept them. 
But unfortunately, when you have said then the guy there, you discover that the policies back come impact on you negatively. I'm an example. This happened to me. I got into university to do my PhD in the UK just before uh, uh, President Buhari uh, got into office. I, I, you know. And then when he got into office, uh, it was, it, it, that was about midway into my PhD. I, the, his policies came up and rubbish my entire service. All the provisions I made to be able to pay my school fees, they couldn't help me anymore. And so it took the grace of God for me to be able to you know, finish my program and come home. And I, I'm telling you that it wasn't quite easy. That's what these young people are going through. I didn't blame my university because I signed a contract to pay my fees. And I, and I had an undertaking that if I didn't pay my fees, the university could cook me out. So I didn't go to fight the university. I negotiated with them. Mm. And then I, I, I reached back to my people, family back home, friends, etc. And I was able to mobilize. And eventually, I got out of that, out of that mess which the government put me into. So we shouldn't yes. be misbehaving at the global stage and be letting yeah. other countries and institutions that know what they're doing mm -hmm. take responsibility for uh, 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 for what is happening to our children. Okay. Well, we are talking about uh, students' loan scheme. We can take some money from that, the fund we have mobilized now, use it to pay the, the school fees of these children, and they work yeah. at an arrangement that we'll enable them to pay back when they are Yeah, I, th I, I think the Nigerian government needs to find ways to mm. negotiate, you know, just deploy something that would actually help these students. Um, and no. hopefully we can develop our own educational system so that when our kids don't have to go outside and they are embarrassed by stuff like this. Anyways, this is are you, not, are you, are, this are you sure you are not the lady I've told before that you should actually be the minister of education? Are you sure you are not the one? <laughs> you, I you just might take right that answers. up. <laughs> you have all the right answers. Hey, yeah. Why are you not the minister of education? I, would, I, I, I might take that up in the future. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you, coming. Sir. It was lovely having a conversation with you about this. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking with Dr. Peter Ogudaro. He's an educational researcher and the leader of Nigerian Teachers Community. And we've just been talking about the fact that some students in the UK, Teesside University, have been sent back home over on paid fees. All right, this is where we have to draw the curtain on the show today. It's been lovely having the breakfast with you as always. My name is Rune Paulson. And I am Yamgul Agadi. Let's have the weekend edition tomorrow together. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>